If you have watched my previous video, it was on simple linear regression where we were looking into a relationship between one dependent variable and one independent variable. In this video, I'm going to share with you on multiple linear regression. Now, what is multiple linear regression? It means that we have more than one independent variable, which is x. And what we want to do, we want to look into what is the change in the dependent variable, which is y, due to your independent variable, which is ivs over here. And you can see in this example is your x1 and x2. Yeah. So from this simple representation, you can see that I have two independent variable, x1 and x2. And I'm very interested to see what is the effect of this x1 and x2 on y. And we want to see when the IV, which are the X1 and X2 over here, changes by one unit, what will be the effect or the changes towards Y, which is your dependent variable. So let me share with you a multiple linear regression model here, yeah, where I have your Y, which is the dependent variable. I have your beta 0, which is the intercept. I have beta 1 and X1, which is the first independent variable. I have beta 2. And I have x2, which is another independent variable. And this list can go on until beta n, xn, plus, okay, and epsilon over here. Yeah. So what we are going to do uh, for this video, we're going to discuss a multiple linear regression model, which has three independent variable. So in this model, we want to see what is the impact of shopping time yeah, which is our first independent variable on sales. So technically, if people are shopping for a longer time or they're staying in longer time in your store or a shop, so we want to see what is the impact on your sales. So if they're spending one minute, let's say, yeah, that one minute would increase your sales by how much? Then the second independent variable here is the expenditure on research and development. So if this particular firm or store is conducting, yeah, research and development, if more money is being spent, so technically research and development would improve their products, processes, and so on. So we want to see every ringgit spent on research and development will increase the sales by how much, yeah? And the last independent variable here is the um, advertising expenditure by competitor. Okay, so we want to see the competitor for this particular store or firm, if they are going to spend more on the uh, advertising expenditure, technically they're going to be more visible, they're going to be connecting more to their uh, customers. Therefore, okay, from a conceptual or theoretical perspective, we can see that if more a competitor is spending on the expenditure, um, especially on promoting their own store, we can expect that the sales of this particular shop is going to decrease yeah so that's why i have put a negative sign over here and we will actually check yeah once we run the analysis to see how uh, the signs might change yeah we never know but technically based on the uh, literature and based on theories we know that okay if your competitor is spending more money on advertising their product there are higher chances that your sales are going to decrease yeah so let's move on to the uh, Excel, Microsoft Excel, to see how we will conduct this multiple linear regression. So I have a set of hypothetical data, assuming that uh, I have a, a store, yeah, I'm selling headscarf, and I've collected this data for up to 25 months. So in the first month, I collected how much is the sales that I conducted, and what is the accumulated hours yeah, spent by the uh, customers in my shop, so yeah, that around 23 hours. What is the uh, R&D expenditure that I conducted in that particular month? And yeah, somehow I managed to get what is the uh, expenditure yeah, by my competitor yeah, that he used every month to promote his product. Yeah. So now I'm going to use this data to run multiple linear regression. So what you have to do, yeah, you have to go to here, data, from your data tab, you need to choose data analysis. Yeah. From data analysis, you get into a regression. Okay. Right. 
So for your input Y range, which is your dependent variable, is sales. So we have selected sales. And for the input X range, which is your independent variable, we will select all the three yeah, independent variables. So we have selected them. I'm going to take labels. Yes, we have taken with the labels. Um, yeah, we are happy with the confidence interval, 95%. Yeah. And where do I want the output range to be? I want the output range to be somewhere around here. Yeah. So yeah, that's all. Click OK. So over here you can see in your regression statistics, the information that we need to interpret is your R square. We have to interpret your ANOVA here, which is your F statistics. We have the F significance, yeah, the value here. And we need to know what are your coefficients. Yeah, so we have short time, we have expenditure on R&D and the uh, expenditure by the competitor. And we need to look at the P values and also the lower and upper uh, values here. Yeah. So. I would be interpreting to you all these values one by one. But before that, yeah, I would want to highlight to you, whenever you run your regression, the first thing before you interpret anything, first you have to go and check whether your coefficients are all significant or not. Yeah, And in this case here, by just looking at the p-value, I know that all my coefficients are significant. Then it means there's a model. Yeah, It's worth explaining the model. What I've done yeah, using our previous model earlier, I've actually plugged in what are the coefficients or the beta. Yeah, I've got the beta for short time. I've got the uh, beta for R&D expenditure and I've got the beta for um, advertising expenditure by the competitors. Yeah. So what does all these betas or coefficients indicate? Yeah, It's trying to say that, let's say if you're going by hours, so we're trying to say if your customers yeah, shop time increases by one hour in your shop, your sales will increase by $1.51. How about the R&D expenditure? We're trying to say if your R&D expenditure increases by $1, your sales will increase by 0 0.07. And how about the expenditure by the competitor? Yeah, and we found that the coefficient itself was negative. So we are trying to say, if your ex your competitor is spending one extra dollar on his advertising campaign, your sales are going to reduce by zero point zero three. Why I said reduced because there's a negative sign here. And if you check back the data, it's negative zero point zero three. Next, we will interpret the R square. The R square value is 0 0.98. Yeah, so what does it say? So it says that approximately 98% of variation in sales is explained by shopping time, R&D expenditure, and competitors advertising expenditure. Yeah, so we have an extra of, um, I can say, 2%. Yeah, so basically, 98% yeah, of your independent variables yeah, have actually explained uh, the uh, sales, variation in sales. So there's another extra 2%. So probably there are some other variable yeah, which falls into the category of that 2% yeah, that influence your or explains the variation in your dependent variable. Moving to F-test. So what we want to do, we want to test the significance of the regression model. So we are testing whether the entire model is significant. Yeah? We want to see, for example, now in this case here, we had three independent variables. We want to see at least one of the independent variables yeah, has a linear relationship between the dependent variable and only then the model is going to be actually existing. Yeah? So therefore, we're going to see yeah, in our null hypothesis, we can see beta 1 equals to beta 2 equals to beta 3 equals to 0. That means all the betas are 0. Yeah? Therefore, we can see none of the independent variables are going to exert any effect on the dependent variable and we'll say no linear relationship between dv and any of the ivs for the alternate we say at least one beta is not zero 
Okay, so at least if one beta is not zero, there is a linear relationship. Therefore, we can say there is a holding model. Yeah, so we always have to run the F test first. How do we do it? So you can see in your ANOVA table there, we had your F statistics, which was 343.007. And we have the significance F, yeah, which is technically the P value here. Yeah, okay, for your F statistics. So if this value here, yeah, which I call the P value, okay, for the uh, F here, which is the uh, F uh, statistics. So if this value here is less than the alpha, then we say we reject the null. If the value is greater than alpha, in our case here is 0 0.05, we fail to reject. Yeah. So looking into this value, yeah, it's almost zero. So how do we conclude? The significant F is almost zero, which is less than the level of significance, which is 0 0.05. Therefore, the null hypothesis is rejected at least one slope is statistically different from zero. Yeah? Therefore, we can say our model is binding. Yeah? At least we have a model in this case here. So the testing hypothesis for regression coefficient now. So we're going to test for every single coefficient. We want to see whether they are significant. So this is the t-test, which is equal to your beta minus zero divided by the standard error. You don't have to calculate the ty because Microsoft Excel has already provided you the t value, yeah? So the null hypothesis is tested by setting, yeah, your beta equal to zero. So you have to do all this hypothesis testing for every uh, coefficient. So your null will be beta one equals to zero and your alternate will be beta one not equal to zero. So you have to do this for beta two and beta three. From the regression output, we can see that over here we have your coefficients, which is your shop time, your R&D expenditure, and the advertising expenditure by the competitors. So I have the coefficients that I've already interpreted earlier. And I have the T statistics value over here. And this is what we have to look into, which is the P values. So if you have a look at all the P values you know, for the uh, betas, all the P values are less than 0.05. So if the p-value is less than 0 0.05, we reject the null. So how do we conclude? We can say that the p-value for all the independent variables are less than 0 0.05. Therefore, we can conclude that the coefficients are statistically significant. Therefore, we reject H O. So the last step here, we look into your confidence interval. So I have the uh, output from your regression. So I have your coefficients over here and I have your confidence interval, lower 95% and upper 95%. So you need to write the hypothesis for each of your betas. So the null hypothesis, beta 1 equal to 0 and your alternate beta 1 not equal to 0. Yeah? So you have to test all your betas one by one. So if you look into the lower and upper for all the three betas, you can see that this lower and upper doesn't straddle between a zero. There's no zero in between. It's 0 0.132 then it goes to 2.888. There is no zero in between. And try to look into the uh, advertising expenditure by competitors. Yeah, The lower is negative 0 0.041 and the upper is negative 0 0.023. It's negative but there is no zero in between. Yeah, So the confidence interval do not include a zero. Therefore, we can conclude that the coefficients are statistically significant. Yeah, so this is how you interpret your output uh, from the uh, regression that you have conducted. For more details, yeah, do watch my earlier video on simple linear regression.